Hey YouTube, it's Greg Sinti here on along for the ride on this beautiful March 6th up here in Canada, Ontario. Can't believe how nice the sun is. Just gotta love this glass roof here, it's fantastic. And we just got done shooting some archery. Well, I'd like to say that went great, but it didn't. It was pretty dismal. And we're headed home, and on the way here, we noticed that gas had gone from the 173 that I posted the other day. And just drove by a gas station that has gas priced at 173.7 to a buck 82. Yes, a buck 82. So the question is getting closer and closer as to what exactly would it cost to go to an electric and just how much more expensive is it? So I did go through the process of pricing out the Ford Lightning because Canada has opened up their configurator site and you can now go in and build your Lightning. And disappointing, yes, we've got that other video about what they downgraded on the XLT. The only way I can get a vehicle comparable to this with the beautiful glass moonroof here and the sliding back window back there is to buy the Lariat Max. Like you gotta max it out with this package and everything. So that price is there as well. But these lightnings are ranging, and I compared, just to clarify, close that up so it's a little quieter. Prices I got are based on a three year, 20,000 kilometer lease, because that's what this vehicle is right now. We just leased it, just for three years, a short lease, because we wanted to get into the lightning. This was just a temporary vehicle. So anyways, the prices I've got range anywhere from $1,100 to $1,500 a month for the Lightning. And I gotta tell you, it's making me wonder whether or not you can just afford to go to the electric, because that's a lot of money. Right now, this vehicle is costing me, payment-wise, for a three-year, 20,000-kilometer lease, $565 a month. Yes, $565 a month. To switch this vehicle into a Lariat, we're talking about double the cost per month, minimum up to triple the cost per month. Now, many people would like to say that this vehicle is actually costing me more than that if I factor in the maintenance that I have to do and the gas that I have to do. And they may be right. Maintenance-wise so far, and with the other vehicle I had for three years, the only maintenance I did on it was an oil change at 8,000 kilometers, every 8,000 kilometers. So if we factor that into the cost of this vehicle, that works out if we do three a year for 24,000 kilometers or 20,000 kilometers. If we do three a year, it works out to an extra 20 bucks a month. So now I'm at 585. So $585 still versus the 1100 base light XLT. That doesn't really get me what I want. All the way up to 1500 for the fully maxed out Lariat, which is more than I want, but it's got this and it's got that, which are two important features. So the question becomes is, how much gas can I buy for the extra $400 a month? That's the question. And that's what we're gonna take a look at because as gas prices go up to a buck 81 a liter, starting to wonder whether or not that cost is getting close and whether or not it's worth switching over to an electric. Okay, so we're back home in, in the YouTube studio as I call it. And just to go over some of these numbers here, we are looking at a lightning in and around the $1,150 range all the way up to $1,587. And that's the month uh, lease price for that three year 20,000 kilometers. And then you can see that the finance prices are a little bit less, okay, about $100 or so less, which is kind of nice. So I think I would definitely finance this vehicle if I was going to do it, because I would buy it and keep it. I don't think I'd be doing the lease and the trade in and out. And then just to clarify the different levels, the XLT, if we're talking standard or extended range battery, we definitely don't have the sliding rear window, nor do we have that power moonroof. And if we move up to the Lariat, even at the standard level, uh, we've got the sliding window in the back, still no power moonroof, but lots of other options. We've got heated and cool seats, we've got the 15 and a half inch screen, we've got the Beano sound system. So lots of additives on top of that. And I drove the 2018 with no sunroof and enjoyed it, but I gotta say I do love that power moonroof. And then jumping up to the what I call the Lariat Max um, at $100,000, a little over $100,000, that's where we can get that power moonroof. So the difference between it and the Lariat Extended is it still has the extended range battery, so you're looking at about $3,000, $3,300 difference in terms of price to get that power moonroof. That's where we're at. 
So I was a little off with what I pay. I pay 575, not 565. So not a big deal there. And there you can see I've got my oil changes in there for the $22 a month. And that's three per year, which is again, more than we need to. All right. And then if we look at fuel, I haven't paid over a buck 60 a liter yet, even though today it's at 182. So if we look at 20,000 kilometers and I averaged about 11 liters per hundred kilometers, which is more than what I'm using right now, I'm down to about 10.4. Again, all these numbers are based on hard numbers and nothing ever works that way. Uh, we're looking at 293 a month for fuel, which brings me to 891.14. So still under that $1,100 mark. So the next sheet I put, let's take a look at those differences. If we take a look at the differences, the top part's all the same, that's just my vehicle. Down here is where we have the different levels and the different cost per level. So you can see even at a buck 60, I'm still $256 more a month for the standard level, the standard battery XLT minus the features that I don't have. And that 256, that's a hard number because these lease prices aren't going to change. That's the price you're paying for your vehicle every month. Whereas if you take a look what I'm driving right now, my payment stays locked in, but what I pay per month for oil change, I guess if I put the $22 a month away every month, like a good budgeting person, that would be great. I don't do that. But fuel is certainly gonna vary. Some months I'll drive more, some months I'll drive less. It won't come all at once either. You know, when I need gas, I go to the gas station and put in what I need to put in, put in what I can afford to put in, that kind of thing. Whereas these prices down here for the lease of the Lightning are definitely prices that will stay fixed so that 256 is definitely going to be a number that will not change in a year that's three grand extra i'm paying for the vehicle and again remember this is just a lease so if i did this over three years i'd be nine thousand dollars more that i'm spending on this vehicle so let's take a look at this fuel cost up here right now it's a buck sixty what happens if we jump it up to two dollars if we jump it up to two dollars i'm still sitting 183 dollars more a month for my standard lightning and that's not even the vehicle that I really want to look at, the XLT standard model. I think I would definitely be jumping up to the Lariat somewhere to get that sliding back window. I might be able to live without the moonroof, but not that sliding back window. We jump it up to $3. Now we're starting to get down to where that standard XLT, standard range battery is 20 cents difference a month, $2.38 a month. But I have to be buying gas, it's $3 a liter. So the question is, is when will that happen? And how long can I drive before that happens? Now, if we get into the standard, you know, Lariat, standard range battery, we still gotta increase gas fuel prices. So let's try 350. It's $80, let's try $4. $4, we hit the negative. So at $4 a liter in gas, I can afford the 1320 or spend $1,320 a month on my truck. That's $700 worth of gas. That's either a lot of driving or very expensive gas, as we can see. All right, out of curiosity, what does it take to get to my Lariat Max, which would be my go-to vehicle if I could afford it? So let's go up to five. Five, I'm $72. $72 still more a month, $870 a year, almost a thousand bucks. Let's do 550. 550, we hit the negative. Let's try 540. 540 were under 80 cents. So I would be saving money on the Lariat Max, which is a fully loaded version Lariat with my power moonroof, sliding window, all the bells and whistles. I'd be saving money if gas was $5.40 a liter. I'd like to say I don't think that's ever going to happen. I could be wrong, could be very wrong. But if it does, I would hope by that time there's some of these vehicles and lots of other EV vehicles on the lots that we would be able to choose from. I have to be honest with you, I'm seriously thinking that I'd like to go to an electric vehicle sooner than later. But just looking at this, if I know that I can spend up to $3 a liter in gas and still be ahead of the game with my truck, I think I will continue to drive my truck and pay the fuel costs. We are seeing some significant changes. It is starting to, you know, fuel the EV world, if you want to call it, because people are starting to want to pay less and less for gas and are getting more and more frustrated about paying increased prices. Is it enough to make you go to an EV vehicle? 
I guess it depends on how accessible they become and just how affordable they become. But I'll be waiting until gas hits $3. Anyways, that's my take on the increased gas prices and whether or not it's enough to push me to buy an electric vehicle. I think we've still got some playroom here. At $3 a litre, that just gets me into a Lightning. And right now the Lightning is the least expensive truck that's out there. That Rivian is sitting at the $100,000 range like the Lariat Max. So until then, and until gas hits over $5 a litre, I think I'll keep putting gas in my ICE vehicle, keep driving it, keep doing some research and seeing what's out there that'll fit my lifestyle and fit my passion for EV and passion for the environment. So until then, this is Greg Sinti saying, see ya and enjoy the sunshine.